When it comes to exploring paranormal phenomena, there's perhaps nothing more controversial than ghost busting, hunting for spirits or apparitions. Lloyd Auerbach is a parapsychologist whose specialty includes investigating apparitions and hauntings, the kind of psychic activities that have been reported aboard this World War II era aircraft carrier, the USS Hornet. To help him connect with those phenomena, Lloyd depends on the gifts and skills of Bay Area psychic medium Annette Martin. Now there doesn't seem to be any energies in here at all. No. As soon as I stepped on board, I felt goosebumps. So whenever I feel goosebumps, I know that, uh-oh, there's a spirit here. Annette and Lloyd are investigating the area that once served as a ship's medical bay. Annette has never been down here before. I saw a doctor sitting at the desk. He feels like he uh, could be in his late 30s, early 40s, a fairly large man. To try to measure the psychic activity that Annette is encountering, Lloyd uses various environmental sensors. We try to determine what's in the environment that connects to an experience. One of the instruments that he uses is a magnetic field detector. There are many accounts of electromagnetic phenomena occurring in places where apparition and ghosts have been observed. I'm, I'm getting a name like uh, Bernie, Bernard, like a Bernard. He's a little shy. Well, ask him just to play with a meter over there. Yes, can you make the meter move? Yes, you are, right you there. It's not uncommon for different mediums to see the same apparitions or spirits. I've had other psychics back there, and there was a doctor that had been described similarly to what Annette said, as well as the name Bernie came up once before. He says this is his office. This was his office. That's an impression. And it's still his office. <laughs> when people die, people tend to go to places they had fond memories or fond connections to in life. And thousands of sailors had fond connections to the USS Hornet, a ship that some say has a special presence. It's like the ship is glad that I'm here. It kind of enwraps you in its arms. Uh, I'm getting too dramatic now, but it, it, it really is that way. It's a ship with an incredible legacy. During World War II, the USS Hornet downed over 1,400 enemy planes and sank 73 enemy ships, making her one of the most decorated ships of the war. She also seemed to sail under a lucky star. Attacked 59 times, the Hornet never suffered a major hit. That's almost inconceivable. So someone or something was looking out for the ship. The Hornet was also connected to another world beyond Earth when, in 1969, she served as the recovery ship for the Apollo 11 astronauts, the first men on the moon. Retired from service in 1970, the USS Hornet was about to be scrapped in 1995 when volunteers helped turn her into a museum. And that's when, people say, the apparitions began to appear. All of a sudden, we see a head go by this porthole. And uh, we both looked at each other and said, did you see that? Nobody was supposed to be aboard the ship at that time. As the volunteers worked to get the ship in shape, they reported some strange occurrences. They were trying to chain off a number of areas in the ship. And they found that if they asked the ship or chain, fresh chain would appear around a corner they had just passed where there had been no chain a moment before. The long and the short of it is that we found chain six times. It seems that these are almost guardian angels who are here to make sure as best they can that people know about the ship and its great history. The forecastle or forecastle of the ship was another place where some early activity was reported. That catwalk over there, uh, one of the guys felt like he, he, there was somebody staring at him from behind. And I was facing this direction painting, and I saw two figures standing up here, one in khakis and one in work blues. For almost all of the visual sightings of apparitions on the Hornet, 
the witnesses were unclear that they were, in fact, apparitions until they disappeared. So in general, these folks look three-dimensional, solid, like real living people. But today, the area is quiet. One of the key things about doing ghost investigations, doing paranormal investigations in general, is if the spirit doesn't want to be there, they're not going to be there. But I'm not getting the, um, any impulses whatsoever. They had better luck in the J.O.B., the bunk area for junior officers, and reportedly another hot spot for apparitions. Wow. Oh, oh boy. This is really strong in here. He's, he's a very large man. I'm getting this, um, lots and lots of curly hair and big, my gosh, he's strong. Like he's she picked up on a big, strong. burly spirit named Jake, who may in fact be a spirit that had been reported being seen and experienced in other parts of the ship. So I asked him, well, what are you doing up here? And he said that he just liked to hang out up here because he wanted to be an officer. The apparitions are typically dressed in the period in which they served. And the age that they appear typically would be about the age that they were when they served. He's saying that he was here during the war. OK, World War II? Yes. He died somewhere else, but he, he's come back to the ship. And uh, because his buddies were all here, and so he wants to be here with his buddies. I have been on the USS Hornet before, but I've never picked up so many as I have today. Annette Martin has been picking up on spirits ever since she can remember. She grew up in San Francisco as an only child, but an only child with clairvoyance on both sides of her family. Research has shown that it does tend to run in families. Whether or not it's carried in the genetic code, we don't know. It could be very much like uh, a talent for art that's carried in the family. And there's nothing Annette enjoys more than using that talent to go ghost busting with Lloyd. Of course, we don't really bust ghosts. We don't even break them. We just kind of talk to them. One of their favorite apparitions haunts the Moss Beach Distillery in Moss Beach, California. She is known as Kate, or the Blue Lady. There have been reported sightings of Kate since Prohibition in the 1930s, when the distillery was the restaurant and speakeasy known as Frank's Place. During seances held at the Moss Beach Distillery, Annette learned that Kate was a young woman whose real name was Elizabeth Claire Donovan. When her husband caught her having an affair with Charlie, the piano player who worked at the restaurant, he murdered her on the beach below. Within a week, according to the locals, her apparition was being seen on the beach wearing a blue dress, walking up and down the beach, and also in the restaurant quite a bit. So why don't we go over here in this area where the piano used to be? One of the stronger places that I see Kate is in the outside dining room where Charlie had his upright piano. And she just dearly loved to hear him play. And he used to sing. Oh, I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> well, yeah, she's unusual activity on this. Oh, my gosh, she's really excited. Restaurant employees like Susan Broderick have also experienced Kate. Susan was working alone in her office downstairs when all of a sudden her printer mysteriously went on. There was no reason for the printer to go on. There was nobody else in the office at all. And I heard it printing a piece of paper. And I pull up the one piece of paper on the printer, and there was only one thing on that whole piece of paper, and it was this little teeny heart. I'm sure that that was from Kate. She was very flirtatious and, and full of fun in life, and she is the same. So why do some people like Kate come back as apparitions after death and not others? Lloyd suggests that there may be some sort of environmental component involved. You know, people always talk about if the conditions are right when they talk about contacting spirits. There may be something to that, that if the conditions are right when you die and want to stay around, that you can.